Hi everyone, this is Coach Matt. In this video, we're going to talk about forechecking concepts. First, we will define what is forechecking. We will discuss the core concepts and objectives of forechecking. We will diagram a basic 122 forecheck, and then we'll look at some video clips from a recent game to learn and improve our forecheck. Forechecking occurs when the play is either in the offensive zone or the neutral zone and we do not have possession of the puck. Forechecking is how we, as a team working together, structure ourselves and pressure the opponent in those zones so that we can regain possession of the puck. The core concepts of forechecking start with our team structure, also referred to as our positioning. There are two key concepts to our team structure. The first is to protect the middle of the ice. And the second is to have multiple layers of our defenders. We use these concepts to achieve our objectives, which are one, to force the opponent to the outside, two, to cut the ice in half in order to take away our, our opponent's time and space. And then our third objective is to pressure the puck to force a turnover. Now let's diagram these concepts and the basic one, two, two, four check. First, the diagram on the side shows our offensive zone. The X's are the opponents. And in this diagram, the opponent is retrieving their puck from their own zone. The blue shaded area is the middle of the ice. Remember, one of our core concepts is to protect the middle of the ice and force the opponents to the outside. Let's see how we do that. We've added our first four checker. F1 to the diagram. We want them to pressure the puck from the inside out to steer or guide or force the opposing puck carrier to pass that puck up the boards. I like to use the metaphor that F1 pressures like a cheetah, fast and furious. But you may hear other coaches use other metaphors, which is all right. The key thing to remember is that F1 needs to skate fast to quickly apply pressure on the puck. Next, we have F2 and F3 entering the zone. These are typically our other two forwards. Notice that they create a second layer to our pressure. F2 is on the strong side of the ice and is positioned near the tops of the circles. I like to think of F2 like an alligator lurking in the right spot, ready to quickly chomp up the puck when it comes up the boards. F3 is our third forward checker and they cover the high slot. I think of them like a hawk because they're high in the zone, but they're ready to dive down low if the puck moves to the weak side corner, or they'll stay high if the puck comes up the strong side boards. And last, we have our two defensemen who create our third layer to our four check. In this slide, we see the multiple layers. This is how the one, two, two gets its name. And one more note, Notice how the second layer is positioned on the defensive side of our opponent's strong side wing and center. We do this so that one pass up to those, that wing or center does not beat all of our forwards. We want to keep the play, they want to keep the play in front of them so that they can attack, as we'll see here shortly. All right, now that we have our structure in place, let's look at how we accomplish our objectives. F1 pressures inside out, forcing the play to the boards. F2 anticipates the puck coming up the strong side and pounces on it. F3 covers high and is reading the play. Our strong side D is sealing off the boards and our weak side D is our safety. Both D should be inside the blue line, but in a situation where an opponent tries to sneak a player behind our D, our safety as the back out, making sure that nobody gets behind them. Once the puck is moved up the strong side boards, notice how we've cut the ice in half. By forcing the puck to the outside, the opponent has less time and space to work with now. This is where we go to work with F2 battling for the puck from our defensive side and F1 curling with the puck and pressuring from the other side with F3 taking away a pass to the high slot, and D1 is ready for that puck to come up the boards. 
we're in great position to force a turnover and regain possession of the puck. Okay, but what if the opponent tries an over breakout and passing it from one corner to the other corner uh, despite F1's efforts to try to force the play up the boards? Well, that's a great question, and we're going to look at what we do in that scenario. In this situation, our Hawk, F3, reads that pass to the weak side and dives down low, quickly attacking on the puck. Meanwhile, D2 reads that play and anticipates that puck going to the corner and coming up the opposite half boards, and they aggressively pinch over to cover any puck coming up uh, those boards. Our other three players rotate over to cut the ice in half. And while our players' roles have all rotated or changed, the structure and the objectives of our forecheck have stayed the same. Now let's watch a few video clips from a recent game. And let's look to see if we have good structure and if we put ourselves in a good position to accomplish our objectives. In our first clip, we have no cheetah. This makes it easy for the opposing D to skate the puck up. Next, we see F1, our cheetah, quickly skate the pressure of the puck. However, F2 doesn't get into position, and we don't have a second layer of our pressure on the right side of the ice, and this allows the opposing D to easily carry the puck up and break out. In our third clip, we have great pressure by F1. I wanted to show this clip so we see the importance of the cheetah. Their pressure can quickly disrupt the play and create a turnover and, and a scoring chance. In our last clip, we have pretty good structure here. We have the middle of the ice protected. We have three layers to our forecheck and we do a good job of forcing the puck up the boards where we eventually regain possession. Let's watch. A few additional tips and notes. All players should be scanning the ice to gather information so that each player can recognize the role that they are in on the forecheck. F1 should typically avoid chasing the puck behind the net. And remember, these same concepts are used in both the offensive zone and the neutral zone. Thank you for watching. We'll see you at the rink.